Red snapper is a fishery in the Gulf of Mexico and throughout the Atlantic Ocean that was affected by overfishing. For our project, we focus on how overfishing affected red snapper's population and how humans work to rebuild that population. Although humans have worked to help red snappers, there are many other fisheries that are still being affected by overfishing. The issue with overfishing is it not only affects the individual species, but the entire ecosystem as well. Our inspiration was to introduce the concept of overfishing to a wider audience. We aim to educate people about red snapper fisheries in a simplified way. That is why we created the children's book. The children will be the future of the fisheries and should know what has happened in the past so they do not repeat the mistakes we've made. Hi, my name is Isabella Schwartz and I'm going to be reading a children's book that Brooke Severchuk and I wrote called Roger the Red Snapper Goes to Career Day. Our story begins off the coast of Florida in the Gulf of Mexico. There's a family of red snappers. One day, little Reggie hears at school that there will be a career day where he can bring a family member to talk to the class about their job. Little Reggie gets excited when he hears this because his grandpa is always telling him stories from when he worked for the FBI. While at the dinner table that night, little Reggie couldn't wait to ask the question, Grandpa, I'd love if you could come talk to my class for career day about your time as an FBI agent. Would you be able to do that? His grandpa laughs. Anything for you, my favorite grandson. The next morning, little Reggie and his grandpa swim to school. On the way, his grandpa reminds him to be careful when alone in shallow waters because shrimp trawlers have been hurting many kids around the community. When they arrive at the school, little Reggie leads his grandpa to a classroom full of different kinds of young fish. So nice to meet you, Agent Roger, the teacher says to little Reggie's grandpa. Would you like to start by introducing yourself to the class? Well, kids, as you may have guessed, I am a red snapper, Roger started. You can tell this by my rosy red color and red eyes. I live on the reef with my family. Some of us have lived to be 57 years old and we can reach 50 pounds and 40 inches long. When we're ready to have kids at two years old, we spawn from May to October. We can spawn over 20 times a year. Some large females can even produce over 2 million eggs. One little hogfish asks, Agent Roger, where can you find other red snappers? Great question, Roger exclaims. We can be found here in the Gulf of Mexico. Red snappers are also found from the Carolinas in North America down through the northern part of South America. We mostly live on rocky reefs and other hard bottoms. When we're young, we typically live in shallower waters near mud and sandy bottoms. As we age, we prefer deep waters from 30 to 620 feet. A young triggerfish asks, what's your favorite food, Agent Roger? Well, I feed on fish, shrimp, worms, and some plankton, explain, explains Roger, but my favorites are any kind of cephalopod, such as octopus or squid. I use my canine teeth to feed on prey. Between the times of 4 a.m. and 6 a.m. is when I am heavily feeding. I have to watch out for predators like groupers, sharks, barracudas, and large marine mammals throughout my day. Little Reggie shouts out, Tell them some of your cool stories from the FBI. The students all widen their eyes in anticipation. Roger chuckles. Sure thing, Little Reggie. When I was your age, I dreamed about working for the FBI, which stands for Fish Bureau of Investigation. When the FBI had hired me 25 years ago, there were so many cases that needed our help. One of the fishiest series of cases involved missing red snappers that had been going on since the 1950s. No one could figure out what was happening. Some fish were here one day and gone the next. This was really affecting the population of the red snappers. While I was out working on a case, I saw something suspicious. It was a shiny, unknown object floating in the distance. I alerted the FBI immediately, and they sent out an investigation squad. While we were all observing the mysterious item, it began to move towards the light. All of us watched in fear. Where did it come from? Why was it here? Did it connect to all the missing cases? Where did it go? There were so many questions and not enough answers. A few days later, one of the agents saw the object again, but when reinforcements got there, the agent and the object were nowhere in sight. This confirmed that the objects were involved with all the missing cases. They were dragging fishes up towards the light. We began alerting the community about these mysterious objects. But the problem was many fish were mistaking them for prey. The population had reached an all-time low in the 1990s. After years of investigating, we discovered that these mysterious objects were being put there by humans. They were overfishing us for both commercial and recreational use. It seemed like they were targeting the big and old fish as they were the majority of the missing cases. All that seemed to be left were young fish that couldn't produce enough eggs, making it very difficult to regrow the population. 
The humans knew they had a bad effect on our population. Around 2005, we knew they were trying to help us when we started seeing less mysterious objects floating around. They weren't fishing us as much over the next couple of years, but our stock had still been affected by what they did in the past. We were overfished. By limiting the number of red snappers that they could catch, they were rebuilding our population. By 2013, our population had increased and they were no longer overfishing us. But the population was mostly made up of many young fish that could not spawn as many eggs as adults. Red snappers were no longer considered overfished in 2017. Another child asks, does this kind of thing only happen to red snappers? Roger responds, no. This has actually occurred in the past for many different kinds of fish, one being the gulf sturgeon. Humans would catch anything they could get their hands on and didn't understand the repercussions. Eventually, they learned what they were doing was affecting the entire ecosystem. Now they manage the fisheries in a way that allows them to have sustainable fish populations. Little Reggie's teacher says, Well, that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you so much, Agent Roger, for coming in and teaching the class about your experience in the FBI. The students applaud. Roger says, It was my pleasure. I love being able to talk about this with the younger generation so they know what is going on in their community. After class, all of the students surround little Reggie and tell him how cool his grandpa is. This makes little Reggie so proud of his grandpa. He cannot wait to someday join the FBI and to help the community just like him.